I'm Abby Esparza with Photomanipulation.com and today we'll be looking at how to create a burning effect in Photoshop. If you like what you see, go ahead and show us a like and even subscribe for new and exciting videos every week, five times a week. With all that, let's jump into what we have here. Today we will focus on the charred skin and the various embers and flame. So I already have my subject all prepped and ready to go. However, you can find links to the various images including the background image um, all down in the description. To start things off, we are going to create two new adjustment layers. The first being a black to white gradient map. And the second being a brightness contrast layer bringing the brightness down to 27 and the contrast up to around 44, 45. We are also going to double click the layer to open up the layer style panel and adjust the blend if settings. We want to take the darker color out of the highlights of the face. Here we ended up with a blend if of about 130 slash 210. Again, using the right hand toggles, um, holding alt to split the toggles up. But really, these settings and the adjustments themselves will vary from image to image and may need adjusting further down the line, which is why we definitely want to use adjustment layers. I am a big advocate for non-destructive editing, where you are never permanently affecting editing or destroying uh, pixels. Adjustment layers, smart objects, and layer masks being your two biggest tools for non-destructive editing. Speaking of which, let's group these two layers and add a layer mask to the group, inverting the mask from white to black by hitting Ctrl or Command I. Now hold Ctrl or Command and click the subject layer. Next, using any kind of grunge brush, any kind of grungy brush, uh, set to white, start masking back in your adjustment layers. This is going to be the foundation or base for our burning skin. So go ahead and mask in any area you intend to turn black and charred. Use any brush that gives you some nice jagged edges. Once happy, you can go ahead and close the group up, naming it adjustments to keep things somewhat tidy. With our base all set, we are going to create a new group, copying, dragging, and dropping the layer mask from the adjustments group onto it, and naming the new group texture. This group will hold any of the layers you use to add texture to the skin. Here I have dropped a texture of a rocky mountain wall into the new group. Textures of rocks and tree bark work wonderfully for creating a charred surface. While I don't have the link to this exact image, uh, sorry about that, I will provide alternatives to everything down in the description. Whatever textures you do choose, uh, you will want to set your layer mode to overlay and convert it to a right click smart object, if it isn't already. You will also want to bring the saturation of the texture all the way down, turning it grayscale. And finally, you will want to darken the texture, and most likely increase the texture's contrast. This will change from image to image, uh, but here we have a brightness of negative 118 and a contrast of 100. I recommend adding these settings first before trying to really place your image or texture, as once all of these adjustments are applied, you can really start to see the burnt texture um, taking form, which helps visualize the final charred effect. Once you are happy with the placement of things, duplicate your texture and change the brightness to 130 and the opacity to roughly 40%. Add a mask, inverting with Ctrl or Command I, and mask in the subject's highlights. A soft round brush will work perfectly. These highlights will be fairly subtle for now. We will be punching them up a whole lot more in just a moment, so just focus on the brightest areas, um, like the forehead in this case. To finish up, this is optional, but you can add a drop shadow layer effect to the whole texture group to create a, 
a um, bit of a dirtier or soot-like edge. Basically, it will darken the edges in general. Play around with these settings, but if you want my exact settings, uh, go with a blend mode of soft light, an opacity of 100%, an angle of 150 with global light checked, and then distance, spread, and size all set to zero. We are going to finish up our charred skin by adding both the adjustment and texture groups into yet another group, naming this group Burn. And then adding a layer mask to the new group. So with this mask, you can make any global adjustments to your burned skin, mostly refining the mask with your grungy brush, uh, finalizing the affected surface's um, overall shape and flow. You may also not even need to do this. Um, I always personally find some detail to fiddle around with for 20, 30, 40 minutes. So if you are anything like me, then... Mm. Speaking of which, I will make a genuine effort going forward to use less pre-prepared resources and fades, as I know they can be a bit frustrating. But I really do tend to fiddle around with things for absolute ages. It's really very dull to watch. Um, uh, but I know it can leave people feeling a bit robbed. <laughs> Moving on, you may have noticed we have lost most of our subject's features. You're going to want to bring them back using a mixture of overlay and normal layers. Create your two layers, placing both layers above your burn group. Go ahead and paint in any tiny little highlights and reflections on a normal layer using a default round brush. Then over that layer, further bring out the highlights with a layer set to overlay. Again, painting with white. We are just focusing on the eyes and lips, really, um, making sure they stand out amongst all of the dark shadows we've created. You can adjust the blend if settings on the overlay layer to pinpoint those highlights, uh, using the left toggles to take the light out of the shadows. Also, I do use a tablet. Um, I highly recommend tablets, even a cheap one. Uh, don't worry about brand names. A $25 tablet will serve you well for years. Once you're happy with your, let's call it, makeup, uh, group the layers and name it. Moving on, we are going to group the makeup group, the burn group, and the subject all into one final master subject group. So I don't organize all of my PSDs all the time, but with this effect I do highly recommend it as things can get confusing really, really quickly. And then you are stuck flipping layers on and off and that's just no fun. Also, it's not just for keeping things tidy. We are going to add a layer mask to the master group and mask in some texture to the edge of our subject's face. Things like chips and cracks in the skin. The longer you spend on this, the better off you are. I could have spent more time on this if I'm being honest, but again, I could take two, three, ten hours and ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Close up your group once you're happy because we are moving on to the final highlights. First, create and clip a curves layer into the master group, jacking up those highlights. Adjust the blend if settings, bringing the light out of the shadows, like a 9 slash 80 in my case. Invert that layer mask, turning it black, and start painting in your highlights. Hitting the high points of the subject, like the forehead, nose, and cheeks. Also, the edges of the rocky texture. Need higher highlights? Duplicate the curves layer, reset the layer mask back to black, and push them even further. And finally, you can make the highest of highlights by creating and clipping a color lookup layer, set to bleach bypass, into the subject, inverting the layer mask to black, and again masking in those high points. I also hit the edges of the burns uh, a little bit. Don't worry too much about this part. Um, you aren't going to know exactly how bright you need your highlights to be or where to even place them until you put your flames and your fire. 
This is my second time running through this image, so I already have an idea. But basically, these things don't really go in a one, two, three step format, um, as some tutorials might imply. Almost nothing is linear. If you need to go back and adjust your initial texture adjustments or paint in some more highlights, then go ahead and do it. That is why you should always use non-destructive editing techniques. Your layer masks, adjustment layers, and smart objects. Now with at least your initial highlights placed, we can start adding in some embers coming from within the cracks of the skin. Or the surface of whatever object or subject you are burning up. Go ahead and create a new layer, setting it to screen. Right off the bat, let's add an outer glow layer effect. As always, play with and adjust the settings to fit your exact image. However, this can be a good starting point. We have a blend mode set to screen, an opacity of 75%, a neon orange leaning slightly red uh, for the color, and a size of a 38 pixels. That one in particular will vary depending on the size of your image. Now I'm going to be using a neon yellow orange color to paint in my glowing inner ember bits. For the brush, if you have a kind of scratchy brush like this, then that will work wonderfully. Maybe add a bit of a blur to it um, when you are all done if it's as sharp and harsh as this one. However, if you don't have a brush like that, you can make a super simple alternative using the default round brush. Here are the settings. Take a look and give them a copy. It's super simple, basically just a jittery round brush. You can save the brush by clicking the square in the bottom right hand corner of the brush settings panel, so you don't have to keep remaking it. Use this brush or something similar to my scratchy trash brush, set to again a neon yellow, on the screen layer to paint lines of ember showing through the cracks of the subject's burnt skin, or what have you. Again, I'm using a tablet, uh, though to recreate a similar tapered effect, you can use the eraser tool set to a soft round brush, erasing the ends of the line so they look tapered. Make the lines very jittery, with some parts being thicker and brighter than others. Some long, some short, and some just tiny little small dots, like the light is just barely peeking through. Follow the cracks, giving everything a nice flow, and making sure they taper again smoothly. I used a darker orange for the edges of the skin, uh, combined with the yellow going back and forth between the two colors, and painted a rough, more grungy line or area, a bit less concentrated. If you are using the custom round brush, just click and make a bunch of little dots. So once you are happy with your embers, it's all smooth sailing from here because we are going to use the oldest Photoshop trick in the book, adding fire to an image using the screen layer mode. Find a stock photo of a flame on a black background or even take one yourself. They are very easy to make. Um, I'll have some options and alternatives in the description, however, uh, by the way. So get your stock photo and place your stock photo, set that stock photo to screen. If needed, lower the shadows of the images using a um, curves adjustment. You could also use levels or even brightness contrast. Anything will really work. You just want the background to be pure black, which means invisible on a layer set to screen. There you have it, instant fire. We aren't going to stop here though, uh, never stop there. Uh, there is some fine little finessing you can do. First, use either warp mode or the puppet warp to shape your fire. Play with both, see how they work, see how they feel, see how they move. It's mostly just a lot of tugging and pulling. Next, mold your fire around objects or features like this ear using the smudge tool, set to a strength of around 80%. You might need to experiment a bit with the number, but basically this will allow you to drag the edges of the flame, letting it wrap and envelop an object, much like firewood in reality. Don't hate me, but I'm going to just go ahead and snap the rest of my fire in place here.
because my next tip is to make fire less floaty and see-through by creating a layer below a flame, keeping it set to normal. Then painting with either a dark red, burnt orange, or maybe even bright yellow, all depending on the area and circumstance. You are basically painting a solid color behind the flame to make the flame um, more opaque. In this image, I didn't need to do that all that much, but if you ever find that your fire is looking very photoshoppy, then give it a try. Fire isn't all that transparent if you really think about it. Go ahead, finish up with a couple layers set to a screen above all of the flame layers, using them to paint a nice glowy orange around your flames and fire. You can use a large soft round brush set to a low flow rate to slowly build that light up. And that is all there is to creating a burning effect in Photoshop. It's really just two adjustment layers and a texture doing most of the heavy lifting if you really think about it. That being said, the devil is in the details, so don't skip on them details. With that, like if you like, subscribe if you really like, and let me know what you'd like to see next. Because as always, I like doing what I like, but I like doing what you like just as much. I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. See you next time.